This is part two of the presentation series on essentials of the 2015 revision of ISO 9001. In this presentation, we will look at clauses six and seven covering planning and support. I'm Terry McCann. Clause six, planning. This is the first of three clauses or subclauses dealing with planning. 6.1, 6.2 and 6.3 deal with planning from a higher level structural perspective, considering risk-based thinking, quality objectives and changes to the QMS. In 8.1, the standard will consider operational planning, mainly with operational processes in mind. In 8.3.2, the standard gets into the nitty gritty of design and development planning requirements. 6.1 Actions to Address Risks and Opportunities It is a sad fact that many organizations only considered the risks associated with failure when there was, in fact, already a failure or product nonconformity of some kind and they were engaged in corrective and preventive action. To counter this, the 2015 revision of the standard no longer has a requirement for a distinct preventive action process associated with corrective action, but rather calls for risk-based thinking, or RBT, to be applied at various stages in the planning, design, development, and release of products and services. By risks, we are talking not only about potential hazards to health and safety, but also the risk of damage to property and or financial loss whether for the customer, a third party, or the organization itself. The presumption is that one important purpose of a quality management system is precisely to prevent bad things happening. Thus, risk-based thinking will weigh risks against the benefits of proceeding or not proceeding with an opportunity or course of action and decide on implementing mitigations or not. By introducing the concept of risk-based thinking into ISO 9001, the technical committee that produced the 2015 revision tried to walk the middle road between an insufficient consideration of risks and benefits on the one hand, and the more formal risk analysis and management required in, say, the medical device or aerospace standards. This subclause requires evidence that RBT has been applied in the planning stage and has applied it to customer and regulatory requirements within the context of the organization as that has been determined by top management. After due consideration, the plan may be for a risk simply to be taken as acceptable or to be avoided by not proceeding with an opportunity or mitigated to make the risk more acceptable before proceeding. 6.2 Quality Objectives and Planning to Achieve Them Quality objectives are an essential output of the planning process for ISO 9001 2015. From the wording, the organization shall establish quality objectives dot dot dot. We can see that it is not a requirement of the standard that top management themselves determine each and every quality objective. However, quality objectives must flow from the organization's strategy and quality policy. And we will see later in subclause 932 that the extent to which quality objectives are met is required input for management reviews by top management. Generally speaking, if in addition to flowing from strategy and quality policy and having clear accountability, quality objectives are SMART, that is, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant to product conformity and customer satisfaction, time-bound, then the requirements of the standard will be met. The point here is that quality objectives need to be a part of the planning process. 6.3 Planning of Changes To be done responsibly and with due diligence, all activities that have the potential for impactful consequences should be planned before change is undertaken. This is no less true of changes to the quality management system itself, which should follow a consistent process that includes a consideration of risk, 
impact on other elements of the QMS, resources, roles and responsibilities. Clause 7, Support. 7.1 Resources, 7.1.1 General. The organization shall determine and provide the resources needed. The organization shall consider the capabilities of. The organization has to determine the resources that your QMS needs and then provide those resources. This may all appear to be so self-evident as to be overlooked as a formal activity. Since this is a requirement, however, you need to be able to demonstrate that the organization is doing due diligence in this regard. An organization must show that it understands its capabilities and constraints and where it must rely on outside providers for gaps in its internal capabilities. The same goes for 712 people. Be able to demonstrate that you have all the people you need to effectively operate and control the processes of your QMS. 713 Infrastructure Demonstrate that you have determined and resourced all the infrastructure such as buildings, equipment, utilities and technologies, whether hardware or software, needed for the QMS processes to be effective for achieving conformity of products and services. 714 Environment for the operation of processes. Similarly to infrastructure, demonstrate that you have determined and provided and can maintain a social, psychological and physical environment needed for the QMS processes to be, again, effective for achieving conformity of products and services. 715 Monitoring and Measuring Resources 715.1 General Note that this clause is not intended to cover all monitoring and measuring resources, but only those that are used to verify the conformity of products and services to requirements. Such monitoring and measuring resources need documented evidence of suitability and fitness for purpose. 7152 Measurement Traceability Extra diligence is required where monitoring and measuring resources need to be calibrated or periodically verified and traceability of their status needs to be maintained. There need to be processes around protecting such resources from unintended change or deterioration and steps to take when measuring devices are found unfit for purpose and need recalibration and to deal with the impact resulting from measurements taken with such unfit devices. 716 Organizational Knowledge This clause is new with the 2015 revision of the standard. It requires an organization to recognize something that many less mature organizations overlook or take for granted, namely the varied knowledge that is held by the organization, whether documented or undocumented, formal or tribal. And if some of that disappeared, as could happen if certain key personnel left the organization or became incapacitated, it would have an adverse impact on the organization's ability to operate processes correctly or achieve conformity of products or services. This is an area where some risk-based thinking is appropriate in asking the question, what organizational knowledge is difficult to replace and what would happen if it got lost or otherwise disappeared? Another factor to consider is whether the organizational knowledge is becoming obsolete with changing needs and trends. This subclause requires an organization to make the necessary determinations and take appropriate actions. 7.2 Competence This requirement is really a specific extension of organizational knowledge. It requires the organization to identify elements of competence that affect quality and ensure that people acquire competence whenever shortcomings are discovered. Such training must be documented and evaluated. 7.3 Awareness 
As stated previously, everyone in the organization needs to be aware of the quality policy and the particular quality objectives that apply to them. They also need to know those parts of the QMS that impact them and the implication of not conforming with QMS requirements. 7.4 Communication The organization needs to have a consistent approach to internal and external communication. This is not meant to cover all communication, but only such as is relevant to the quality management system. In other words, communication needed for QMS processes to be effective for achieving conformity of products and services and customer satisfaction. In such cases, we must decide what, when, with whom and how we will communicate, both internally and externally. 7.5 Documented Information The 2015 revision of the standard has simplified some of the language and terminology without requiring organizations to change to these new terms. For instance, where the 2008 revision talked about documentation, quality manual, documented procedures or records, the new standard simply talks about documented information to cover all of these terms. But you are still welcome to continue using your old terminology. You simply won't find these terms in the 2015 revision of the standard. Generally, however, when ISO 9001-2015 talks about maintaining documented information, it is referring to what was documentation in earlier revisions. And when the 2015 revision talks about retaining documented information, it is referring to what were records in earlier revisions. Maintaining equals documentation, retaining equals records. This subclause requires many of the basics of generally accepted good documentation practice or GDP, but is not as strict as some forms, such as is required for medical devices or aerospace. Thus documents need organizational standards for unique identification, date of creation, change history such as who, when and why, protection from accidental or unwanted changes or corruption, especially for records that provide evidence of conformance, a review process for technical subject matter, an approval process for standard operating procedures and work instructions, access control and protection for intellectual property or to ensure confidentiality. Most of these are common sense and controls which would be expected to be in place in mature companies and organizations, even if not ISO certified. This concludes part two of the presentation series on essentials of the 2015 revision of ISO 9001. Part three will look at the essential elements of clause eight on operations. I'm Terry McCann. If you have questions or comments, please email me at the address at the bottom of your screen. I would love to hear from you.